Hey, what's up everyone? Lucas here. I'm back with another tutorial on GeoPix 1.0 and in this tutorial I want to tell you a little bit more about fixtures and go through the process of building one from the ground up so we can see some of the pitfalls and pros and cons to a few different workflows and kind of hopefully find the best one for this job here. So uh, in order to get started, uh, we just need to clear the scene as always and uh, have a clean start here. And so the first thing I like to do when I'm working on something that's to scale is bring in a scale reference, right? Something I can look at and be like, okay, I know how big that is. Uh, I know what that looks like in real life. And the best thing to start with, in my opinion, is a human being. So let's start by bringing in a piece of geometry, uh, the import geo, and let's choose from the examples folder, uh, the character.obj model. Uh, so when that comes in, it comes in on the grid, centered. I'm going to move it back just a little bit. And the next thing we want to do is create a piece of geometry to use as an image plane. For that, we don't need to bring in a piece of geometry. We can just use a primitive. Uh, so I'll click primitive over here under objects. And I'll click on the drop down under primitive type and I'll select plane. This is obviously too big of a plane because that triangle panel uh, it fits in my hand. It's pretty small, right? So this is uh, by default a one meter by one meter primitive. Uh, so this is way too big. This is a good time though to show you what we actually have, uh, what we're working with. And in this examples folder, we also have two files here, this triangle panel reference.jpg, which is what we're going to be bringing into the scene momentarily. We also have this file here, which when you open it, you'll be presented with this. This is the actual uh, dimensions, width and height of the panel in centimeters. Uh, but since GeoPix is basically talking in meters, we want to convert this to meters. So I've done that here uh, just to make this copy pasteable. And so what we're going to what we're going to do is size this plane down to those dimensions. So I'll copy this first one, which is the width, and I'll place this into scale X, and I'll copy. Uh, the height right here, and I'll place that into scale Y. Once we've done that, uh, this is looking pretty close. You know, I'm just eyeballing this, and and you know, if I put this next to this guy's hand, it gives me a kind of an idea of if this is at least within the right scale factor of 10. Uh, and it definitely is. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this at the middle of the grid, uh, and I think that's fine. So the next thing we want to do is actually import the texture that we're working with and bring this into GeoPix. Uh, to do that, we actually can head over to the IO tab and we can load this in there. Uh, now normally, when you load videos and textures into the IO tab, you do so by specifying a folder, right? And then over here in video clips, you'll have a list of things you can bring in. Uh, but there's an easier way in, this, in, the, in the sense that we don't need all of those files. There's a different way we can do that. So if I bring up the examples folder again and I grab this, I can just drag it into this viewport. Uh, and it's good to go. It's ready to use. It's right there. Uh, so if we hop back over to the editor tab and we bust open the I.O. palette, uh, we can see that our triangle panel texture is right here. Uh, and something else to note, right? This dimensions that we scaled this to, uh, this aspect ratio that these two these two parameters create is the same aspect ratio of this image, right? Because I've cropped it to the edge, uh, to the bounding box's edge of this panel. So this image has the same aspect ratio as this geometry, and that's very important. Uh, otherwise we'd be drawing on a skewed image and that would give us an incorrect result with the panel. So that's specific to this, uh, this particular panel, but definitely something to keep in mind. And if you're not sure about the aspect ratio, I recommend cropping your image to a square uh, so that you can just have a square image plane and you'll be fine. So uh, the IO palette, which you might've remembered from last, uh, last episode or last tutorial we had, uh, we basically had this and used it with a projector system and we use this to assign textures to the projectors, but this also works with geometry uh, because there's a similar slot in the geometry uh, primitive and that's called material texture and we can pretty much just click on any of these things and assign it to that texture. Uh, and when we do that, it updates the texture to use that particular uh, object from the IO tab. 
Uh, but it's a little bit dark, so we need to make this lighter by turning off the shading. Uh, and when we do that, by toggling off matte shaded, we get the full brightness of the texture. So this is good. Uh, this means it's pretty much fine and ready to start working with. So we're looking at this, and there's a couple ways we could approach this, right? The most basic uh, and also tedious route would be to uh, manually draw pixels on top of each of these pixels. Uh, now we can go ahead and do that first just to show you what that's going to look like. Uh, so let's make a fixture. And let's hop over to Pix mode. And I'll go to Tools, Pixel Add Mode, uh, and we'll just start adding pics here as we go. And I'm, I'm being pretty sloppy with it, uh, but as you can see, even, even if I was a little bit more careful, this would be fairly imprecise, right? Because I'm clicking 45 times, uh, and these clicks are not going to be in perfect, um, perfect height uh, across one row. So there are going to be a lot of variations that you know may matter. It also may not matter. It depends. If you have an organic shape, this probably won't matter. But if you have a geometric shape that has some symmetry to it in some way, uh, this might actually matter. So this is the least precise way, but it's also in this case not so bad because. Uh, you know, we only have 45 pixels on this board, and uh, you know we have a pretty good high-resolution image, so we can really zoom in here. And we can really click on uh, what we think is the middle. So this isn't bad, uh, but this is probably the second best option. So I'll go ahead and uh, delete these pics, and let's try to do things with generators uh, because generators are going to allow us to do a little bit less work on our own. And so if we go over to Hull and we click Hull Add Mode. Uh, we can do something kind of like what we did last time, but this time we'll just pretty much draw out the signal path, not every pix. Uh, so this allows us to draw less overall dots, which means straighter lines and faster. Uh, so this is great. This seems like probably the best way to forwards. Uh, and so once we've done that, we can select all of our poles, and we can click Generator from Selection. Uh, and then we can type in the number of pixels we have on this board, which is 45. And in theory, we should have a perfectly mapped board. Uh, but this is not the case. And the reason why it doesn't work out, let me go ahead and... Let me go ahead and show you. Uh, the reason why this doesn't work out is you can see we have this weird bending around the edges uh, and the reason why is we create a hull right this is a big long continuous line and then we resample that line to create these fi uh, these picks uh, but the re the thing is these hulls aren't spaced out with that in mind they're actually spaced out uh, with the geometry of the overall triangle in mind so when you remap that curve it doesn't actually give you the correct spacing in the path that you think it's going to give it to you, and it's going to give you the correct spacing spatially along every edge of the triangle. So, this is probably the least, uh, my least favorite method, but it's also the fastest, but there's a way to leverage the best of both worlds. Uh, right now, we have all of these picks that we just need to go and delete, so let's first get over here to our generator and let's delete that, and let's go back to our fixture, select our picks, delete those, uh, and now that we have uh, just the holes uh, again, let's go ahead and start selecting every two holes, right? Starting with the bottom, and let's do a generator from just that. Uh, so, with a more constrained approach like this, we can specify the number of picks per row. As you can see here, this does a very nice job because this is a linear path that it's generating across. And we can grab that fixture again grab the next row, generate, type in the number of uh, pixels on that row, eight. And again, this looks pretty great, right? So we can keep going. And this will just take a few, few seconds to get correct. Uh, and the next row.
And lastly, that one. So we could keep going with the with the hulls, but the generators aren't going to do very well because there's only one, two, and three left. So what I'm going to do is just add these in manually by going back to pixel mode and adding those in. Uh, and once I've done that, I'm pretty much done. So I can grab these generators and delete them. And we can turn off this image uh, background here. And as you can see, we have a pretty decent looking triangle uh, that follows the path and has sharp corners and uh, looks pretty great. And that's pretty much it. That's how I would approach mapping this particular panel. Uh, but you know, depending on what you're building, you may actually want to do different things. Uh, there's so many ways you could approach the problem. You could combine uh, workflows. Uh, but in the end of the day, uh, this is this is probably the most reasonable way to approach a custom shape. Is just do generators per chunks until you get the thing that you want, or get the closest thing to it, and then modify it after the fact. So. Um, from here, we could, you know, just fiddle around with this. Uh, we can duplicate it and start using it in our scene. Maybe this is a particular fixture that we want. So we could, if we wanted to, we could export this. I'll call it tri triangle panel. And let's say we start a new scene. We could import this as a starting point. And we could bring that in and we could just start duplicating this and using it all over our scene. So like a radioactive uh, emblem or something like that. So anyways, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or thoughts in the comments below or through email. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Appreciate it.